Hey, this is John Nemo from LinkedIn Riches. You are listening to Words of Mass Disruption. Here's a perfect example, uh, and I'm on a roll here right now. I did this with one guy in Australia for a year, okay? And, you know, he replied, you know, yes, sometimes, never, never bought, never bit. And uh, out of the blue yesterday, I get a message. I, you know, I'm doing my once a month kind of adding value, asking questions. And he goes, you know, I got to say, you've been kind of politely chasing me for a couple of years. I've used some other agencies. I'm not happy. I'm ready to sign up and see what you can do. Closed them. Like, I didn't even talk to the guy. Like, <laughs> so I mean, you can do this. Like, it's not rocket science. It's just replicating and overlaying how you do real life, which is talk to people them up, ask questions, add value, and then you move into the sale. This is a good distance here, you think? Yeah, distance. Yeah. All right. What about this thing? Does this thing need to be anywhere in particular? Be a bridge of nowhere. Words of mass disruption. Words of mass disruption. Welcome back, disruptors, to another episode of Words of Mass Disruption, the podcast that talks to entrepreneurs and business leaders about their stories of disruption and we follow them on their journeys and learn from their stories and their experiences. As always, I'm your host, Eric Haynes. This week, we are going to be talking LinkedIn and why are people still not using it to its fullest potential? Why do so many people still treat it like it's just a resume site? Bullet after bullet after bullet. We're going to flip the script and help you move from a profile site all about you and into the modern world of making your lo- your LinkedIn profile about your target audience, the decision maker, and the buyers out there you're trying to reach. We will also talk about focus in picking a niche. Because if you're one of those people trying to be everything to everyone, then you're probably being nobody to no one. So to help solve all your LinkedIn worries, today I jump on the phone with the enigmatic LinkedIn ninja himself, John Nemo. He is the author of LinkedIn Riches, and he has one of the best programs I've personally seen out there on how to maximize your LinkedIn profile and content and use it correctly. We will talk about his templates and his easy steps to get you moving forward with your new profile. But before we start, I would like to address a very serious issue, serious, serious issue. Not enough people are aware of this podcast, and too many people are missing out. There are people you know that need motivation and inspiration, and they need help getting their careers back on track. You, and only you, can play a big role today in helping correct this egregious wrong. By simply sharing this podcast with at least one person today, you can help. Make this a goal for today and feel great about yourself at the end of the day for completing this goal and possibly changing someone's life for the better forever. Okay, let's jump into the LinkedIn conversation with John Nemo. John, thanks for joining me. Hey, super excited to be here. It's great to have you. I've, I've seen a lot of your emails, a lot of your inspiring stories. I've seen you all over LinkedIn. I don't think there's enough good content out there, whether it's podcasts or other material that really tells people how to use LinkedIn well and kind of what people aren't doing right. So I wanted to talk to you about that today. Yeah, fantastic. So before we jump into what we're not doing right with LinkedIn, let's get a little bit of background, kind of how you got into this, uh, this marketing and sales, you know, realm, uh, focus on LinkedIn. Basically my career kind of went a little bit, I guess it ends up being predictable when I think about it. I'm the son of two English professors. So grew up in a home filled floor to ceiling with books, love storytelling and writing as a kid and reading, <laughs> end up working in journalism, working for the Associated Press and other outlets, talk radio, Eventually got into PR, social media, working for trade associations, 
And back in 2012, this is where LinkedIn comes into the story. I wanted to go out on my own. I had that entrepreneurial itch. I wanted to scratch. And so basically I made that leap. I had three young kids at home. My wife was staying at home, raising our boys. And I quit a safe six figure day job, made that leap with one client, enough money for 30 days, <laughs> no safety net, no investors. I look back now, I'm like, God, that was crazy. <laughs> but I did it. And within 90 days, I was able to generate over six figures in revenue, all from new clients I found on LinkedIn. And I just opened up a one-man marketing agency, started tapping into LinkedIn all the way back in 2012, and really understanding, whoa, there's something going on here that a lot of people are not utilizing. And so many people, Eric, still think of LinkedIn as a job seeker website. Well, that's just kind of what it is, job seekers, HR, whatever. But no, I saw it back in 2012 and even more so today as it's really Google or B2B leads. Mm -hmm. it, that's really what this platform is. And you've got 600 million members, 200 different countries around the world, two new members join every second. And because of all the data and because LinkedIn is a total big brother company, just like Facebook, they know everything about everybody. So you can reverse engineer all that data, use LinkedIn internal search engine and the key thing is then you find the exact people who want to buy your product or service. You go right to the decision makers. There's no gatekeepers, there's no one in the middle. And if you understand then how to engage and sell on LinkedIn, then you can really scale and you know bring in business and clients quickly. What was different about you that, that versus 99% of the people out there that are not engaging in the, with this platform of LinkedIn uh, the way they should be? What was different? That, that you recognize the, the uh, possibilities with it? I think the biggest thing was understanding, you know, when I talk about LinkedIn and, and do trainings and stuff, really keep it simple. There's three key elements to this, to using LinkedIn for business, for sales and marketing. And it's, I call it the three Ps. And the first one is profile. And that's where you have to start is the thing that 99% of people to this day still are doing incorrectly on LinkedIn mm -hmm. is they have a LinkedIn profile page that reads like a resume. So it's written in the third person. It's all about you. You know, it sounds like you're a pro athlete because you're like, John Nemo has worked such prestigious jobs as John's won all these awards. Like, here's the thing. Nobody cares, mm -hmm. right? And at the time, back in 2012, I was reading, I'm a voracious reader. I was reading How to Win Friends and Influence People, Dale Carnegie wrote it all the way back in 1936. And he had this great line. He said, your ideal clients and customers, they do not care about you. They care about themselves morning, noon, and after supper. Because in 1936, you called it supper, not dinner, yep. like I do. <laughs> anyway, the whole point was when you flip your LinkedIn profile upside down, instead of having it read like a resume, you create what I call this client-facing profile. And so what I did all the way back in 2012 was I, you know, tore down my profile so it didn't look like a resume and I, you know, re-engineered it and reconfigured it to appeal to a niche target audience. Because another big thing with LinkedIn that I've discovered the last six years is the riches are in the niches. Mm -hmm. So if you try to be everything to everyone, you'll be nobody to no one. So you've got to really decide, you know, with LinkedIn, at least for my business, whatever it is what are two or three target audiences, niche audiences I can go after? So in my case, to kind of give an example, I wanted to open a marketing agency. And of course I could do marketing services for anybody. I could do PR and videos and web design for anybody. But I thought about it and I thought, you know, the riches are in the niches here. So on LinkedIn, what I did was I became the debt collection marketing guy. And what I mean by this is I worked in a trade association that represented debt collection agencies. Uh, you know, an odd little niche. Nobody's thinking when they wake up, boy, I want to serve debt collectors, you know. But I had worked, <laughs> I worked in the trade association for a couple of years. I knew a lot of these agency owners. They're good, normal people. And they are running businesses. They make a lot of money. But they need a lot of help with marketing, PR, web design, collateral, copywriting, email, sales funnels. So when I launched my business, I was like, I'm going to be the debt collection marketing guy because I have a little niche here where I can say I've worked for the trade association that you all know. So here's how my LinkedIn profile read. Instead of John Nemo, CEO, company name, like everyone puts, it said John Nemo. And the LinkedIn headline was debt collection marketing services. 
uh, debt collection, you know, website design, debt collection industry, copywriting, whatever it was. And then the front of the profile, the summary section said, what I do, colon, I help debt collection agencies uh, increase sales, add clients and improve their branding online by providing website design, you know, video production, blah, blah, blah. And that really goes into this client facing profile where the first line, if you want a quick win from this episode, one quick win, one simple sentence, just take the first sentence of your LinkedIn profile and write what I do, all capital letters with a colon, write what I do, and then you write I help and insert the name of your target audience, I help blank, whatever my target audiences are, achieve or get, and then you put in the benefits they want, I help this target audience get the benefits they want by providing, and then you put in your product or service. When you even do that one thing, that one sentence, now the context is in place. Because when I went out and connected with debt collectors on LinkedIn, the first thing they did, of course, was look at my profile. The LinkedIn headline said debt collection marketing services. Oh, okay. He specializes in helping our industry with this type of service. They read the profile. The first sentence said, what I do, I help debt collectors get more sales leads, clients, and improve their brand, which is what they wanted, and then by providing these services. So it really became fish in a barrel because it was so niched and so targeted. And again, it was all about them. It was all about, here's how I help you get what you want. Instead of, boy, I'm so important. Look at my resume. Look at my company name. I'm cool. Like Nobody cares about that. Right. So that's really the first thing that you've got to start with is that foundational client-facing profile. So... I, I, I kind of went through this exercise last week as I was preparing to, to have this conversation with you. And I looked at mine and I'm like, okay, I'm, I used to, I, I looked at some old school ones. I like to keep them and see kind of the history of them and see how I'm making them better over time or worse in some cases. But your directions that you just provided is what I followed. And I realized I was missing, you know, what I do for them or the value or, the validation industry validation or credibility piece of it and i kept using the excuse of oh it's really hard to put it into 150 characters or whatever it is but it really was a good kind of disciplinary thing that we should have anyway as an elevator pitch we should be able to say this pretty quickly in one sentence anyway yeah i mean that's the thing that's the thing about it is you've got to simplify this you've got to be able to simplify this so you know when i look up Eric Haynes online, what does it say? I'm putting mm -hmm. you on the spot right now. Helping. Yep. See? <laughs> so you're identifying a target. This is his headline. I'm reading this live. This, he's not prepared for this. Uh, South Lake, Texas. Minus. Okay. I, it says helping C-suite. So, okay, that identifies an audience. If I'm in the C-suite, bridge the gap between strategy and delivery using design principles, focusing on customer first. Okay. So you're, you know, being able to say, if I'm in a C-suite, this is a guy that serves me. What does he do for me? Well, he bridges the gap between strategy and delivery using some design principles and customer centric marketing. So that's an example of how Eric is taking this and running with it. Um, and, and that's the key is being simple, being fast, because if you think about it, Eric, how mm -hmm. distracted we all are. We all have professional ADD now, you know, on our mobile devices, we're skimming and scrolling and thumbing as fast as we can. You have like half a second to catch my attention with a LinkedIn message or invite. So if I can't immediately connect the dots through your LinkedIn headline, the first few lines of your profile, if I don't see what's in it for me, then I'm on to something else. Whereas of course I'll spend all day talking to someone who can solve my problems who seems like they can really fix my biggest pain points. And that's the premise behind this approach. I never realized until I started reading your material, uh, your LinkedIn Riches book in particular, how much people do focus on themselves versus everybody else. <laughs> uh, I'm also a big fan of Gary Vee, so I love his jab, 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 punch, give, give, give before you take. Yeah. And I think it's, it's just, it's always gonna be true. So let's talk about the second piece. So we talked about profile, what's the next thing? Yeah, the second P is prospecting and really understanding, again, the riches are in the niches. And so when you set up your profile, you set it up to appeal to, you know, two or three target audience types. It can be by industry, profession, whatever it is. Then when you go to prospect, 
this is where the power of LinkedIn's platform comes in. Because again, you've got access to over 600 million members in 200 countries. And once you understand how to use LinkedIn search, now I can you know, reverse engineer and figure out who are the people I wanna to talk to, who are the decision makers that can write the check right now for my services. Then you use LinkedIn plus search filters to find people, to find those exact prospects. And then that really leads into part three, which is what I call profits, you know? And that's really where engagement comes in. Because honestly, it's not that hard to learn how to use LinkedIn search. And it's not that hard to understand how to create great targeted lists of your ideal prospects. Where almost everybody fails to this day is now, how do I engage these people? Because you've basically created this you know, virtual uh, online list of your ideal prospects, but now people don't know how to talk to them. They don't know how to engage. And that's where I get into some tips here, but it's really about understanding you can't try to marry everyone on the first date. Like if I connect with Eric right now and go, hey, Eric, Eric, great to meet you. I've got a $2,000 online course. It's gonna, you're gonna make a million dollars in five minutes, blah, 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 like sales, spam, blah, blah. Like you'll just be like running the other way. And I talk to people all the time and they're like, yeah, as soon as someone connects with me, I get hammered with a sales offer or people ask me for time. Hey, I'd like to have a free 15-minute uh, consultation. Click here to schedule a time. And I'm like, I don't even know you. Like, why would I get on the phone with you? So one of the one of the things uh, is when you talk about focusing, how do I how do people use their kind of more of their profile, like their overview that I don't think a lot of people pay attention to? I don't even think a lot of people know you can attach audio and links and videos to that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, backing away from prospecting a little bit, back to profile. Step one is you really want to utilize this template. I've got a free template. We can link to it later, but it's basically walking through kind of these phrases. So it's very clear cut. You do a lot of white space, a lot of short, you know, bullet kind of point things. So it's like what I do. And I went through that sentence. I help this audience get these benefits by providing this product and service. And then you say who I work with. And you can say, I help, you know, these types of customers, um, you know, what makes me unique? That's a great phrase. And I do all these in all capital letters because right now with your LinkedIn profile, you can't like italicize and bold and do colorful text, but capital letters help stand out like almost mini headlines. So what I do, who I work with, what makes me unique? That's really important to include. Like, you know, I utilize 20 years of experience in blah, blah, blah. And, or right. I, you know, having worked with clients such as big name, big name, big name, you know, I can do like you, what makes you unique, right? What's your approach? What's the significant things that makes you different than the other vendors, the other salespeople, the other business coaches, whatever. And then you use other phrases like what others say, and you paste in testimonials from real people. You literally, you know, type them right into the profile sections. You don't just try to use LinkedIn's version because it's very hidden. So you put those in what others say, why it works, right? You can put in more benefits of why your system helps, uh, results I get, things like that where, again, it's all client facing, what I do, who I serve, how it works, what makes me different. And then I put in the final line, like ready to talk, question mark, you know, here's a way to connect with me. Here's a way to call me. And then like you said too, Eric, you can attach media files. So video, audio, imagery, things like that. And what I have found doing this for the last six years is the most important thing, if you get nothing else right, LinkedIn headline, mm -hmm. summary, and then your number one or highest job description. Okay. Because that's really what people scan through is who is this photo, headline, and then a few lines of text, like what can they do for me? And then there's other things you can do with <laughs> skills and endorsements and keywords, uh, which is lower down in the profile. And again, LinkedIn, think of it this uh -huh. way too, as far as using keyword phrases, LinkedIn is trying to categorize you. They're trying to figure out if someone uses LinkedIn like Google and types in business coach Minneapolis, who's going to show uh -huh. up, who's relevant, who has the word business coach in their profile, who also lives in Minneapolis, who might be connected to people that know John. Because remember, LinkedIn is like six degrees of Kevin Bacon, the movie game. Like they look at it and say, if John is using our platform like Google to find a business partner, to find an investor, to find a vendor, he's going to type in a keyword typically around a job title or around 
uh, you know, a service. And then if you've got those things in your headline, business coach, you know, mm -hmm. SEO, blah, 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 whatever it is that you do, and you're connected to the right people that this person also knows, LinkedIn's algorithm says, oh, okay, John is friends with Eric and Eric is friends with a business coach in Minneapolis that John doesn't know yet. We're going to surface that person number one for John. And we're going to tell John, hey, your buddy Eric knows a business coach in Minneapolis. You should check this guy out. So this all plays into it. You know, the keywords, who you're connected to, it, it's an amazing platform. And I would say, I would add to it, and I would expand a little bit and say, you know, of course I agree with all that. And I would say that just for the people listening, if you can get through this exercise and go through and get a concise overview that hits these points, when people read that, not only are they gonna see something different and see something that's meaningful to them, they're going to look at you differently too, as a person that really is concise, that knows how to deliver their message. And it's going to be a great tool for you in other ways as well. I agree. hundred percent, man. So why, why don't, why, you know, have, do, why do I have so much trouble? Why do I talk to so many sales managers and sales VPs and they say, my sales guy just won't use LinkedIn or he just is never on there. Why, are, why can't I get them, my sales guys to use this tool? Yeah, it's because uh, a couple of things. One is people, LinkedIn is its own worst enemy with branding and PR and image. Like they can't outgrow this reputation that they're just for job seekers. And let's be honest, it's a, it can be a very clunky platform. It's not easy to use. It's not as cool as Facebook or Instagram. Like it's not as intuitive as a lot of other platforms. Like they've they've tried to jam so many features in and they kind of get schizophrenic about what they want to promote. and. So there's a, there's a learning curve to overcome. And plus people have never gotten results from it in the past. So they think, well, there's nothing ever there. I get these invites, pff, whatever. But the people that are taking advantage, Eric, the people that are really killing it on LinkedIn, the people that I'm helping and seeing results with is they look at it like a blue ocean. Like nobody's here. Nobody's using it this way. Now, yes, lazy people are getting on and spamming people with sales offers and getting nothing. But people coming on with this nuanced client facing approach are having immense success. And I think where the salespeople also get frustrated is, well, I connect with people, I can find them all, but they don't engage, they don't reply, they don't respond. And typically it's because uh, you're trying to marry them on the first date. So for example, if you and I met for coffee, Eric, we had never met in real life before, but we said, hey, let's get together, or a friend introduced us. I wouldn't sit down, shake your hand, you know, pick up my latte and go, Eric, mm -hmm. I'd like to sell you a $2,000 program. Right. Like I wouldn't start there. Right? I wouldn't go, Eric, I have the stuff I want you to buy for me. I'd be like, so Eric, where are you from? You know, what's new? Like, where'd you grow up? Um, hey, you know, tell me more about where you went to school. You know, I would do icebreakers. I would start to be a human being. I would engage you, right? I would, and that's what you do with LinkedIn is the beautiful thing about LinkedIn, when you really understand how to use the platform is you can do personalized one-on-one -on -one engagement. It's very, very easy. I can look at Eric's profile right now. I see he lives in South Lake, Texas. I can look down and scan and see all the places he's worked. I can see where he went to school, Ventura College, okay? I can look down and see he's been a volunteer uh, for the Asian Film Festival of Dallas. I've got all these icebreakers, so when I connect with Eric, I can go, hey, Eric, came across your profile, thought I'd reach out to connect. And then my first message can be, Hey, you know, I see you live in Texas. Is it Cowboys or Texans, right? Like I go to sports because I'm a football guy. I don't know where it's South Lake by Dallas or I would. Yeah, real look close. It up. Yeah, 10 miles. Okay. Yeah. How about them Cowboys, right? Like That's I right. would start with Cowboy jokes, right? And then the thing about LinkedIn's messaging app or system, they don't operate like emails. They operate like text messaging and instant messaging. So Eric and I, once we're connected on LinkedIn, Eric and I can message, instant message back and forth like a couple of teenage girls. I can do GIFs, I can do emojis, I can attach files, and it can be done in real time. I can see if Eric's online typing a reply, it'll show his face and dot, 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 like it does on text messaging. So my approach to Eric is break the ice, warm him up, ask about where he lives, where he went to school, football team, uh, ask about the film festival. That sounds really cool. I'm into film too, blah, blah, blah. Like I would find a commonality to break the ice. Yep. I, and I, th I think it's an amazing idea. It's an amazing point. And it's so simple, but 
people don't do it or they just have excuses. I had an intern, a sales intern from a local college here, and he went, we targeted his college, graduates from his college, alumni, and then we targeted C-levels, and he was able to get 150 of these executives in Dallas to connect with him that our veteran sales guy of 30 years couldn't get one of those people to connect with him. And he got coffee with four or five of them in the first two weeks. Yeah. And this is an intern, like, but it's so simple mm -hmm. because he started with a commonality. Hey, I see you went to, you know, whatever school, SMU or, you know, hey, I see you went to UCLA. Hey, go Bruins, right? You're going to watch the game this weekend. Yep. Like there's that immediate bond and icebreaker. People need context for you. When you connect with a stranger online, they need context. Who is this person? Who sent them my way? What do we have in common? How can we create a relationship, right? Because we still do business belly to belly. The only difference with you and me is I do it virtually belly to belly. Like, <laughs> but I do this on LinkedIn. And what I tell the sales guys or salespeople like, well, that just sounds like a lot of work. I'm like, well, how's cold calling going for you? Yeah, how are, how awesome. is spending money on billboards going? Versus, again, because you're using LinkedIn to target your exact decision maker and buyer, how is it ever a bad thing to spend time talking to them, building relationships, asking questions. And this is another key part of the engagement to move it beyond, hey, now we've broken the ice and we're you know, joking about college. Now you move into what I call kind of permission-based engagement. So what I say is, hey, Eric, great to connect. You know, We broke the ice about the Cowboys. You wrote back a funny thing, like don't even get me started on whatever. And then I say, you know, curious. And I always start with a question. Here's how I would try to sell Eric my $2,000 course. I would say, hey, Eric, haha, -ha, Cowboys, Vikings, whatever, we talk sports. I'd say, curious, are you looking to use LinkedIn right now to get more clients? If you are, I thought you might find this interesting. I've got a great free training that I can share with you. Just reply, and this is the permission part, I ask you, I don't assume you want the link. So I say, if you're interested in seeing it, just reply yes or shoot me back a thumbs up emoji because most people are on their mobile and LinkedIn will suggest little replies. Shoot me back a yes or a thumbs up emoji and I'll give you the link. And then I say, if not, no worries, you know, PS, go Cowboys or something. And what you do is it's a friendly, conversational, permission-based approach. Are you interested in this topic? If you are, I have something of value for free to offer. For me, it's typically content, a webinar, a blog post, an ebook, uh, whatever, a video. And if people say yes, then you reply right away with a link. And so for you, if you said, yeah, I'm interested in getting more clients on LinkedIn, what do you have? Yes, thumbs up. I send you a link to an automated webinar. You sign up for the automated webinar on your schedule. Prior to the webinar, I email you a bunch of content that enhances and you know the experience gets you quick wins. You're immediately like, wow, this stuff's really good, easy to apply. Now you get on the automated webinar, you're warmed up. Again, I haven't talked to you other than that LinkedIn message. You get on the webinar, you go through the presentation. At the end, I offer my online training, fast action bonus if you sign up, sends you over to an automated uh, timer and a sales page. Now my little secret sauce here is, I have a live chat box on the sales page. And I tell people at the end of the automated webinar, you know, if you're really interested and you wanna look at the program seriously, you can talk to me live, there'll be a live chat box. And so I get alerts on my phone, I'll be out walking the dog, whatever, and mm -hmm. it'll pop up, hey, this person's on your sales page, Eric's on your sales page, and I'll talk to you. And the live chat software will show me, it's this person in South Lake, Texas, they're on a Mac, they're using Safari, they're on this specific page. And then what I'm able to do while I'm walking the dog is close you. Because be, again, you've pre-qualified through all this content and through LinkedIn and through the messaging. Now all I have to do is answer a few last minute questions live and sell a product. And so mm -hmm. that's what you can do with LinkedIn is you can move people off of LinkedIn to you know a webinar, to a piece of content, to a live event, to a discovery call, you know, depending on what your model is and your sales funnel is, the key is warm them up, ask a question. Are you even interested in this? Uh, if you are, I have something that I think could be helpful. Do you want me to share it with you? And then that way people are in control. They can say, no, thanks. And I move on. And then I come back a month later or a couple of weeks later with another LinkedIn message. It says, hey, Eric, I was thinking of you. I created this new blah, blah, blah. I know you're in this industry. Thought you might find it helpful. If you want to see it, 
fire back a yes. If not, no worries. Here's a perfect example. Uh, and I'm on a roll here right now. I did this with one guy in Australia for a year. Okay. And, you know, he replied, you know, yes, sometimes never, never bought, never bit. And uh, out of the blue yesterday, I get a message. I, you know, I'm doing my once a month kind of adding value, asking questions. And he goes, you know, I got to say, you've been kind of politely chasing me for a couple of years. I've used some other agencies. I'm not happy. I'm ready to sign up and see what you can do. Closed them. Like, I didn't even talk to the guy. Like, so I mean, you do this. Like, it's not rocket science. It's just replicating and overlaying how you do real life, which is talk to people, pick them up, ask questions, add value, and then you move into the sale. I changed my picture last week, my profile picture. I had a professional picture take. I work at a design firm, so we get photographers everywhere. And they were making me smile in the pictures. And I was always like super serious. And I took these pictures like five months ago. So after reading through your book over the last, last week, I'm like, all right, I'll put that smile picture up there. And I've gotten so many positive responses from it in the last couple of days. And I put it, so I put it on my LinkedIn. I made it part of my, I rebranded my whole uh, podcast using that same picture. And it was such a basic thing. And I think that's what you're really good at is you're, you're really able to connect that, you know, when you go into a sales meeting face to face, that human piece of it, that smile and smiling with your eyes and being authentic and legitimate is what helps start you off on the right foot, helps close the deal many times. And you're translating that to the digital world. And I thought that was genius, but so simple at the same time. Yeah, I'm looking at your photo now. You look like a great, fun person. Like you have this big smile. You look like you're laughing. Like yep. that's someone like the human psychology of it. You know, if we're trading dinosaur cave bones, you're approachable, right? Like, oh, he doesn't look serious and stern and angry. And he looks welcoming and friendly. Like these simple things, you know, the takeaway for people listening is how do you overlay what works in real life online? Yeah. Right. Smiling. Friendly, approachable, conversational, low pressure, you know, pro consultative, ask questions, solve problems, add value, make it about the other person. Like the more you can overlay what works in real life onto a platform like LinkedIn, the more successful you are. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. I think that you just, if people can internalize that and be able to repeat it to other people, I think they'll be able to go execute on that pretty easily. Well, I appreciate your time, John. I could talk to you forever on this stuff and maybe we should do that again in the future. How do people get a hold of you? How do they get your LinkedIn riches? How do they get that stuff? Yeah, yeah. The best place to go is linkedinriches.com. So the word LinkedIn and then the word riches, R-I-C-H-E-S, linkedinriches.com. Front page of the website, you can get a free copy of my book. Um, sorry, Eric, if you paid for it, but <laughs> <laughs> you can get it for free. It's the worth digital it. version. It's I'll worth it. Yeah, the, the audio book or the um, ebook is free on the front page of my site. You can go to Amazon and buy it too if you want the hard copy. Um, but that's the best place to start. And again, because I want to bring value and content first, I realize you know I'm not going to sell you an online course or coaching program just because you heard me on a podcast. Like you need to kick the tires on me. So LinkedInRiches.com. Also, obviously, I'm on LinkedIn, so you can find Nemo. See what I did there, mm. John Nemo on LinkedIn. You can find me just like the pitch. And uh, yeah, let me know uh, that Eric introduced us and uh, would love to talk to you and, and hear what you have going on. So I'll put links you know, up to all that in the notes on the on the show here. Um, and one thing I'll tell everybody is don't just listen and come back and say, yeah, I read it and it was great. Go do the things in there. It's very, it's very good. It Just sit there and go through it. Read the stories, learn the stories, adapt the stories to your own. You'll think of stories that are similar. John sends out stories every single day. I get nothing from this. I just believe in what John's doing. So everybody go check that out. I appreciate your time, John. Thanks for joining us on Words of Mass Disruption. Thank you. So thank you everybody for listening to another episode of Words of Mass Disruption. Just call me a nerd. I really like those LinkedIn conversations and I'm always looking to talk to people that can help make it a little bit better out there for us. So please subscribe, review, follow, share, tell everybody about it. The more people to hear about it, the better. We appreciate that. Lots of hard work goes into this. Also, we're on Spotify. 
So the new seasons on Spotify will be releasing some of the original season or the first season on Spotify too. Um, we can't just plop those over because of some licensing issues with music. So all the music is brand new and license free and written just for this show. So thanks again and see you next time.